31, Battalion 22. Go ahead and come on in. Battalion 22 is well through and copy. Hi, my name is Jared Carbizan, and I'll be explaining how to conduct a pre fire plan. By conducting a pre fire plan, fire departments can be able to know as much as they can about a building before an incident occurs. Today we'll be having a look at Highlands Elementary School to know its type of construction, use group, occupancy load, and many other important <coughs> features that will be mentioned. As per fire code regulations, the address has to be visible from the street, on the front of the building, and unobstructed. Now as per fire code regulation, there has to be a fire lane around the entire building and it has to be accessible for the fire department and also to have 28 feet of street for trucks to access the building. Now for an illegal fire lane, there has to be a no parking sign, and as you can see, there's the fire code for our area on it, written on it too, Tile 32. And uh, the fire lane also has to be painted red with the word fire lane written across it. Here we have their main power panel, their gas shutoff, and their fire riser. In other words, the room for the main sprinkler shutoff. This school's construction is mostly fire resistive, which consists of concrete block, which are mostly the walls, metal, which are the roof top areas, and small amount of wood, which are mostly on the front parts of the building, which are for decorative cosmetic features. Now I'll be explaining the protection features of this school. Here we have a part of the exiting system. This door is equipped with panic hardware. Per code regulation, it has to be 36 inches from the bottom of the door, 15 pounds of pressure in order for the door to open. Here we have two additional features of the alarm system. Here we have the audible visual strobe, and what it does, when the alarm sounds, it flashes, and makes noise, alerting students when there's ever a problem. And we also have the standard alarm bell, which rings and also makes noise, basically. Basically, we have two sets of noise-making alert systems. The occupancy load for this building is maximum 466, but the entire school during school hours is 800. As part of fire protection, they have extinguishers for people to use in case there was ever an emergency. Another part of the fire alarm system is a manual pull station, which are located in many various parts of the school. Here we have the fire riser. Here we have the control valve, which turns the water on and off. The gauge, which detects the pressure in the system. And the alarm flow valve, once activated, it sets off the whole, the whole fire alarm in this building. And we also have our spare sprinkler heads here. Here we have the FDC, which also stands for the Fire Department Connection, and it supplements the sprinkler system. Now as per fire code regulations, it has to be on the address side of the building, and has to be 150 feet from a public hydrant. Next we have the double detector check valve, which stops water used by the fire system from going into the main water system. And next we have the post indicator valve, which indicates if the, the double detector check valve is on or off. And right now it's off. And here we have also the sign, which represents what this double detector check valve, post indicator valve, and the FDC. Here we have a plot and floor plan of Highlands Elementary School. As you can see, each building has been labeled with a letter. Building A, Building B, and Building C. To start off, we have their main street where they're lo located at, which is Catella Avenue. Next, we have their sprinkler system locations, which is here, right at the corner of the MPR area. Here, right by the classrooms, and out by the kindergarten area. Next, we have their fire hydrant locations, which is near the parking lot, across the street from the school, and right on the side in the back where it goes in. 
Next we have their FDC, in other words, Fire Department Connection locations, which are located near the sprinkler systems. Here, outside of the C building, in other words, NPR. Outside of the B building, right by the entranceway. And also over here by the double detector check valve. Next we have the egress locations. Well, there are a lot, so many exits in the school are located outside of the premises. Each area is indicated with an X here, all showing exits. Mostly the bathroom and the front office. Now to get out, this school hosts fire drills monthly. All students go out to the main fields. Even if there was a real problem, they all, they all must go to the main fields until the fire department arrives in the parking lot. Well, this concludes my report on the pre-fire plan. I hope this information can become useful for all inspectors. This is Jake R. Bizu, report.